Morning, Ange. Um, if Morning. you could just give us a, a squad update for, for the game tomorrow and just, I suppose, how, how the squad are feeling now that you, you have that chance to, to clinch the title, I suppose. Uh, yeah, squad squad updates. Um, yeah, everyone's uh, everyone's uh, okay after the weekend, so um, we don't expect any sort of any change in terms of the ones available. Uh, Josip Juranovic still not for tomorrow. You know, he's half a chance for the weekend. We'll see. Uh, he's in rehab, but everyone else is okay. And in terms of uh, yeah, in terms of the the general feeling, yeah, they're they're good. We had a you know a good session yesterday, and. Uh, about to go out there today and have a session, um, but yeah, the players are uh, in good spirits and looking forward to it. Saturday's atmosphere was was one of celebratory for the fans. You could tell that you know they knew they were almost there. How special could this be tomorrow, especially for the supporters? As we mentioned, how the past year they've had and the disappointment from last season to to now maybe just a point away, you know, from what they always wanted this season. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, we're, you know, under no illusions that um, you know tomorrow night. You know, we got the the opportunity to make it a special night, um, you know, for the football club and our supporters. And um, yeah, look, I'm 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 sure they'll enjoy it. I guess it's uh, it's it's one of those, as you said, after last year's disappointments. Not just the fact that obviously we didn't have success as a football club, but you know they weren't able to to feel a part of it because you know they couldn't contribute because they weren't allowed in the grounds, the stadium. So you know, I think. Um, you know, this year everyone's put in maximum effort, including our supporters. Um, you know, f- everything they had pent up from last year, they've kind of released this year in in a positive way. So um, I'm sure everyone's looking forward to to the final two games. Our role in that is to just make sure we continue on with our good form and and you know continue on from the football we played on the weekend. Um, take that into tomorrow night and and uh, you know, as as I said, um, take the opportunity to make it a special night. And I just want to kind of move away from it slightly. I know you were at the Football Writers on Sunday night. You got your award for Manager of the Year. There has been a bit of fallout after it because of the content of one of the after-dinner speak- speakers. What what were your thoughts on that when you were listening to it? Yeah, look, I wasn't there the whole night, but I was there for that. And, um, yeah, it's fair to say that, um, you know, I guess the content, um, you know, was uh, was probably not appropriate Um to be honest, I don't even know if it's appropriate at anything. Um, you know, with with the way that you need to understand how people feel about these things. But I think the key thing about that is um, you can turn it into a controversy, but, but I just don't think people learn anything from that. You know, make it a teaching moment to be better, you know, for the people who, who kind of have the responsibility of, of organising those nights, you know, an opportunity to just to, to do things a little bit better and uh, a lot better and, uh, you know, understand that, you know, uh, the people in that room, um, you know, you, you you have to take into account, um, you know, their own sort of beliefs and feelings. But aside from that, like I said, it, it's just, uh, I think they've, they've, they've approached it the right way. Uh, the organisers, they've apologised for it, but just an opportunity to be better next time, you know, just rather than sort of make it a, a controversy. I don't think you, you end up learning anything from that. Just be better, appreciate uh, people's and respect people's uh, views. Before that, obviously, at the awards to pick, pick up that that award for yourself. We'll, we'll touch on this before, but the fact that you've been recognised by your fellow pros and also now the, the football writers as well, how does that feel for you? Look, I, I said on the night, it's obviously, you know, hugely um humbling and, and I take a lot of pride again I'm, I'm kind of representative of a larger group so you, you you receive that on behalf of of a group of people who have worked awfully hard and, and um you know to to make something create something special uh, this year when um and i think part of it is that just the fact that i guess going into it that um, there wasn't a great deal of expectation in terms of success uh, whether that you know was because you know, me and my own background or just, you know, the ground we needed to make up. And, um, you know, I think whether that was, you know, the the, the PFA or, or um, you know, the riders, I think people just recognise the challenge we had and, and, and how we've embraced that challenge. And so, you know, I take great pride in it and, and you know, humble. I said on the night, I didn't get the one I was favourite for. Um, sacked by Christmas, but, you know, I've got everything else, so it's okay. 
30 games unbeaten in a league. How much importance are you putting on extending that run and taking it into next season? None at all, Ronnie, because then I would have said, you know, how, you know, did I want to extend 29 or 28 or you start with one. And if you start, you know, I think all you can do and what we've done this year is chip away. Uh, every week is important. We've taken every game with the same sort of preparation and intent, um, equal respect for every opponent, home and away, and not look beyond that. And um, that served us really well to be in the position we are because, as you said, that, you know, 30 games ago, um, we, were, we were a fair way behind in terms of, you know, looking like a team that, that could end up being champions. So, you know, 30 games later, I think we've taken an approach that's got us to this point. And, you know, if we start thinking about, well, let's extend it to 31 or 32, that's never been our goal. Our goal every week is just be the best possible team we can be, you know, play our football, respect the opponent, respect the occasion and, and be at our best. And for the most part, we've been at our best. Um, and even when we haven't been, um, we still found a way to, to get the job done. Moving into the last week of the season, has there been any moves yet in terms of Yota and Cameron Carton Vickers to turn those loan deals into permanent deals? No, that's, look, that's, in terms of timelines, in terms of the final week, I mean, that's stuff that's happening in the background constantly. And uh, as I've said all along, uh, my role in that and, and, and the players' role in that is to make sure that we you know, we finish the season strong. Um, you know, people are working on, 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 on those things behind the scenes and they'll co all come to a, a natural conclusion when the time is, is right. But um, we haven't put it against any time scale or against any urgency because I didn't want it to affect the players and, and, and their ability to, to help us achieve what we need to this year. And to their credit, both those guys have been outstanding. And I think uh, because of the work that you've done across the season, you're going to win the league either tomorrow night or or the weekend. And because you've had success pretty much everywhere else you've been, it's maybe hard for us to get a grip or a grasp on exactly what it means to you or how big it is for you. I mean, given everything that you've had to contend with this season and the big turnaround, is this is this going to be the, the best moment of your career or one of the biggest achievements? Um, look, it, it, I've always said in the past, I've tried not to separate all my successes in terms of trying to rank them because I just feel that that's being disrespectful to the people I shared them with because every one of them, you know, to have success in, in the game, uh, you know, to end up as champions, only one team does that every year in every league and you know how hard it is to attain. So, but in terms of how I feel and, and, and where it will sit with me, you'll get the best sort of understanding of that after it happens. It's just even for me, I know it sounds, you know, it may sound bizarre, but I, I just don't think that way that, you know, how I'm going to feel after it happens. I think I've always tried to approach it where, you know, what's most important at the moment is that I help prepare this team for a game tomorrow that potentially could make us champions. And once that happens, I think you'll get a sort of, a better feeling of what it'll mean to me on a personal level, um, as much as I can sort of reveal on that front um, in terms of how I'll personally feel. Um, but to think about it beforehand and, and, and the task we've had, it's, it's, it's like anything else, I guess, until you reach the summit, um, you know, you, you don't want to think how you're going to feel when you're there. You could also just touch on um, the point Alison raised earlier, not necessarily with reference specifically to the other night, but just in, in general, because I know that you're big on equality of opportunity and um, the, the club is, uh, is as well. Do we have much work still to do in the game in Scotland to make sure that the game's welcoming to, to everyone, that women in particular? I think society as a whole, I wouldn't want to sort of, you know, break it up into sections. Like I said, I, I think there's opportunities and there's lessons for everyone. So, you know, if there's, if people make mistakes along the way, um, it's a teaching moment for all of us, whether that's in, you know, an industry we're directly involved in, in, in this situation, you know, football, or if you're in the, you know, if you're a football writer, it's an opportunity to be better, as I said, but that goes for everyone who, who, you know, even is involved in that moment to understand that, you know, it's a really important part of society today. You know, we, we, I know that we sometimes feel like that unless we're personally offended, you know, we shouldn't get involved in the discussion. But, um, you know, my, 
my whole sort of my own feelings on the thing is that you've always got to have empathy. You've got to understand, you've got to walk in other people's shoes to understand how it affects them. Um, and, and I think once we all, we're all mindful of that, then, you know, there'll be less moments like that where, where, where people potentially, you know, make a mistake um, because they've thought about it beforehand. They've thought about, you know, every person in that room. Um, so, yeah, again, I'm, I'm, I I'm don't want to sit in judgment and I don't want, you know, I think if you turn it into, like I said, a story about that night and the controversy, I think there's a failure to, to, to learn from it that, you know, the people who, who need to be asked about are the ones who, you know, have already made a statement about it and, and you take that on board and you, you try and be better. You know, we can all try and be better, mate. It doesn't mean we're perfect, eh? You know, like, like I said, I, I make plenty of mistakes. Um, you just you try and take every moment to be the you know the better as 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 a person and, and as a society. You say you don't know how you're gonna feel after winning the league title, but you, you have managed big games before, cup finals, league clinching games, World Cup matches. How do you feel ahead of games like this? How do you feel ahead of the game tomorrow? Do you, do you prepare differently? You, you're extra excited. No, look, I, I I'm always excited. Like I I. I, I I think the one thing is that I, I try and impress on, on, you know, on the people I, I share it with is that, you know, every, every, every game you play, every moment you have, you can create something special. And so you don't prepare for it in any different way because you might miss along the way, the opportunity, you know, to create a moment and uh, that, that, you know, lasts, you know, for a lifetime or beyond. So, you know, every game is an opportunity to create something. You know, every game has the, the the potential within it to to create a special moment. So, you know, for the big games, again, my role is again just to prepare the team and prepare everyone to be at our best. Because if we're at our best, or try to be at our best every time we go out there, um, then there's an opportunity for for something special to happen. Um, so, whether that's a big game or it's a, a perceived big game or just a normal league game or a cup game or, you know, home or away. Um, you know, I think if you ask, you know, people this year about defining moments, you'll get, you know, many different, but, you know, one could be Tony Ralston scoring the last minute at Ross County. Now, you know, that's something that I think will remain with people. Now that's, if you're not prepared for that moment in that game, then you're going to miss some, some gold along the way. So for me, every game is, is approached the same way. Um, it's it's every game for me is an opportunity to create something special. Just a quick word on Dundee United as well. Really impressed this season, obviously in in the top half, looking for European football. Well, how do you expect them to line up tomorrow? You had a really good performance up at Town Dice in the season. You hoping for something like that again tomorrow? Yeah, look, it's um, yeah they've, they've had a good season. Um, yeah, Tam's done a good job with them, and uh, again, you can see that it, it's been pretty tight. Um, throughout the season sort of especially in that middle part of the uh, of the table and you know for for clubs like Dundee United that they, they've had to you know work really hard to get themselves into the top half and um you know they've they've got some 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 good players um they're well organized and it'll be a good battle for us but um you know again for us what's most important is that if we bring you know the intensity and tempo to our game that we have consistently over the last you know few months then we know we give ourselves a chance of success and, and they're hard to stop i mean you know hearts hadn't lost for quite a while before we played them um ross county were on a great run before we played them um you know so you know rangers um you know were in great form before we played them we've tackled every game and and we've overcome those challenges um because we know when we play our football we're hard to stop the two transfer windows that you've had at Celtic, there's been a lot of incomings, obviously, which is necessary. Do you expect in the summer for there to be many outgoings, either player, fringe players leaving or, or loans? Yeah, I think that's part of the process. Um, yeah, we, we had a fair few, uh, you know, um, leaving um, in, the, in the last summer window as well, some before I got here, some as soon as I got here, which I didn't take personally. Um, but yeah, I think that's the nature of football. And, you know, this is kind of, in terms of the squad, we, we, we've sort of rebuilt the squad. But, you know, I think, as I've said many times, we're still sort of stage one. We, we, we still need to 
to get the strong the, the squad stronger and, and more robust for what's ahead. So, and with that, naturally there'll be some players who who won't be part of the the, the picture next year. Uh, some who <coughs> will feel okay. We need to get some game time into because we see them here longer term. But you know, we'll benefit from playing. So we'll make all those decisions. Um, so. You know, like I said, I don't expect to see as much transfer activity incoming as sort of last summer, but we, we still have all players coming in and, and, and there will be outgoings as well. Can I just ask you about Christopher Julian? Um, do we expect to see him before the end of the season and where does he fit in for next season in your squad? Yeah, Chris is, you know, again, he's he's training hard, he's available. Um, you know, we'll see how the last you know, couple of games go. Um, it, it's obviously been a challenge for him and, and Stephen Welsh, to be fair, um, because you know, with with Cameron and Carl, um, you know, doing really well, and particularly this last period where we haven't had any midweek games, um, you know, my feeling that has always been in terms of rotation that you know most parts of the field you're pretty comfortable to rotate, but defensively you need understanding and cohesion, and it's harder to sort of um, you know give guys game time, so. You know, that's unfortunately the situation Chris has been in. So, um, you know, but in terms of the future, we'll, we'll sit down at the end of the year like I will with all the players and we'll chart a way forward. And um, with all these things, you, 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 you know, we'll end up doing what's best for the player and what's best for the club. You've spoken before about the importance of, in your own words, crystallising moments when the team stick to your football and philosophy, even when they're under intense pressure or they're behind in a game. Are there any particular moments or games like that from early in the season when you knew the players had bought fully into your ideas, even if the individual result didn't go your way? Yeah, I think the the yeah, there's quite a few times this year where I think we've we've kind of stuck to our principles, um, and it's been important. I mean, I, I've spoken a little bit about you know the when we lost you know four nil to to Leverkusen, which was wasn't a great result, and you don't like losing by that margin. But I think the way we approached it that night, played our football, the players pretty much stuck to our principles, but we just got beaten by a very good team and got punished for mistakes. And I think in that moment, um, you know, the players then looked to well, what's my reaction going to be? And I think that's where you can sort of make sure that. You know, when you've got the players back in that situation, that they'll, you'll support them because they were trying to do what I was telling them to do, then then they'd buy more belief into that, that, okay, you know, even if things don't go well, we're not going to get hung out to dry here. He'll 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 support us. Um, so those kind of moments are, are, are really important when the results aren't there because that's when the pressure is at its most intense for you to potentially change your approach or to try and appease you know, people who are, are, are sort of being critical of what you're doing. Um, you know, you've got to stay strong through that. And um, it, again, that's easy for me to say. I've been through it before and I kind of know that they, you need to do that. But, you know, for the players, they need to see that before they believe in it. And I think when you go through a tough time like that and, and come out the other side and, you know, they come into training and I'm still saying, you know, the same things and approaching, we're going to approach the games in the same way, then, they buy into that. And then, you know, I think there've been different times in the year. I, I, when you talk about critical moments, you know, we've, we've scored a few late ones, uh, goals to get us, you know, results in, in games this year. And, you know, all those goals sort of came from us in, in the dying moments of a game when we know we pretty much have to win. We still played our football, you know, whether that was, you know, even Ross County when we, we were still playing out from the back or, you know, Dundee United when we're, you know, in, in the last minute where Leal scores was with 10 men, we're still trying to pass our way through, get into a wide area. You know, the characteristics are there at the most desperate of times. And that shows you that the players sort of have really bought into what we're trying to do. And with how well the players have adapted and performed in this first season, does that now become a primary focus to get the team to that next step? You know, trying to make sure that they adhere to that philosophy and resist the temptation to go along if and when they're pressed high up as they will be in the Champions League. Yeah, that'll be yeah, that'll be the next the next layer of it. And yeah, we I'm sure that we're going to get really tested whether that's Champions League. I think even in the league next year, I think teams will, will try and find different ways to to try and negate out you know, our effectiveness and and our role will be to and that's my role to to give the players further layers of solutions that exist uh, without having to change our our basic philosophy of the way we want to play, um, you know, and and I think the players 
will come back next year wanting that. You know, they'll be looking at me and the coaching staff and saying, okay, well, what's next? You know, and we've got to deliver. We can't just roll up next year and say, well, okay, we're going to do exactly what we did last year. Um, there's got to be other layers to it. That's how we improve. Um, they want to improve. And and by adding extra layers, I think, you know, hopefully then we'll, we'll be able to work our way through the, the challenges we'll have next year. Um, so, I mean, that's the exciting bit for me. That's what kind of... Uh, you know, keeps me motivated that, you know, okay, you, you, you climb, you climb the mountain, but you know, you, you're kind of at the top and you look over and there's, there's a bigger mountain just down the road. You go, well, I wouldn't mind having a crack at that. So, you know, that's what that'll be us next year.